Hello everybody, welcome to Unit 3 Biology Area of Study 1. Today we are looking at our final um, component of Area of Study 1, which is cellular respiration. So today, in terms of cellular respiration, we are going to be looking at the following dot points. So we need to understand the purpose of cellular respiration. We need to be able to explain the location, inputs and outputs of glycolysis. We need to understand the mitochondria as the site of aerobic respiration. We need to understand and explain the inputs and outputs of the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. We need to be able to describe anaerobic respiration and the differences in inputs and outputs between animals and yeasts. And we need to be able to describe the factors that can affect the rate of cellular respiration. So, first off, cellular respiration. Now, you guys are probably familiar with this um, equation here. So, in terms of the purpose of cellular respiration, it is to transfer the chemical energy that is found in glucose into usable energy, or ATP. So, there are two forms of respiration that we talk about. There is aerobic respiration, which occurs in the presence of oxygen, and there is anaerobic respiration, which occurs in the absence of oxygen, so when oxygen is not available. Um, in terms of why we need cellular respiration, okay, it's used in the homeostatic mechanisms, in the excretory processes, in the production of antibodies, transmission of nerve impulses, contraction of muscles, lots and lots and lots of our things in our body require energy. Okay, so cellular respiration is the production of energy or ATP. So we tag a little ATP at the end of our equation. Why ATP? ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Okay, ATP is basically readily available in one easy single step when it's released, making that energy instantly available for use for cells. All right, so what that means is that ATP, okay, in order to release that ATP for it to be used, it is broken down into ADP and a free phosphate molecule. Because remember, ADP, okay, is adenosine diphosphate and ATP is adenosine triphosphate. So adenosine triphosphate is like a fully charged high energy molecule and to expose free energy we're basically getting rid of um, a phosphate group there. So you can see in terms of here um, what is happening. All right in terms of the actual process of cellular respiration it occurs in the mitochondria. So it is the site of aerobic cellular respiration. Um, the mitochondria we know is a membrane-bound organelle. You may have heard it be referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, this is where our energy is being made. And it is uh, theorized to have been originated from a symbiotic relationship with prokaryotic cells. So again, following that endosymbiosis theory to have been once a free living cell. In terms of the structure, we have an outer membrane, we have an inner membrane, we have our cristae, and we have our inner matrix. These are the major components that you need to be aware of for the sites of where um, cellular respiration is occurring, but we can also see there are ribosomes and there are ATP synthase um, particles floating around as well. Okay. In terms of looking at a summary, cellular respiration can be broken down into three major components. Okay, so our glycolysis is the first stage of respiration. It occurs in the cytoplasm. Okay, and glycolysis does not require energy to occur. It can happen with the presence or in the absence of oxygen. However, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain, they're involved in aerobic respiration. Okay, so these two phases require oxygen to occur. Okay, so they are aerobic. So step one, glycolysis is going to have an input of glucose and an output of ATP, NADH and pyruvate. 
This pyruvate is then going to be used as an input in the Krebs cycle, which is the second phase, and the Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. All right, and we have a few outputs here as well. We've got carbon dioxide, ATP being created, and some more NADH. And then our input for the electron transport chain, which is the third phase of cellular respiration, this one occurs in the cristae of the mitochondria. That NADH that was created is now an input. We have oxygen as an input, and we are creating a lot, a lot, a lot of ATP with another output of some water. So that is aerobic respiration following on with these two stages. Anaerobic is where there's no oxygen present. So this pyruvate and this NADH instead are going to be involved in anaerobic respiration, which still occurs in the cytosol and is going to form lactic acid. We are now going to break this down and see exactly what's happening in each of those stages. So glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. So glycolysis is our first stage and it can occur in the presence or the absence of oxygen. So what's happening is our glucose molecule is being split into two molecules of pyruvate, which are going to be used in the following step. Like I said, this does not require oxygen. But at the end of glycolysis, we end up with two molecules of ATP, so two molecules of energy. So the things that you need to know, specifically location, inputs, and outputs. This is another little diagram that summarizes what we've just spoken about. Alrighty, looking now at our next stage, which is the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle, like I said, is occurring in the inner matrix of the mitochondria. Okay, This step requires oxygen to occur. It is aerobic. It is also known as the citric acid cycle. Okay, So the two molecules of pyruvate are going to enter the mitochondria, in particular the matrix, and they're going to undergo a series of events that result in two molecules of ATP forming, six molecules of carbon dioxide forming, and NADH forming as well. Moving on now to the third stage, all right, which is the electron transport chain. Now the electron transport chain again requires oxygen to occur, it is aerobic, it is occurring in the inner membrane of the mitochondria, which we call the cristae. And again, it's a series of enzyme complexes which are accepting electrons from NADH, okay, that was input, um, and FADH2, which is now going to be how the energy is going to be passed along. So you may be familiar with looking at a diagram like this. Okay, so it's going to be reduced when they accept electrons and oxidized when they pass them on. So our electron transport chain is following a redox reaction. Okay, so in terms of our inputs and outputs, we need to understand that NADH molecules that were produced from glycolysis and Krebs cycle are now going to be used in this final stage, as well as needing an input of six oxygen molecules. Our outputs are then going to be production of water and a mass production of ATP. So depending on what cell it is, we're either going to produce 32 or 34 ATP molecules in this final stage. So in terms of NADH, NADH becomes NAD plus by giving up electrons, and FADH2 by giving up electrons becomes FAD. Okay, so this is the creation of those ATP molecules because adenosine diphosphate plus a phosphate is going to become ATP. Okay, we are synthesizing that ATP that can be used. So basically by the end of those three stages, we're going to end up with 36 ATP or 38 ATP, depending on the cell. So two from glycolysis, two from Krebs cycle, and then either 32 or 34 from the electron transport chain. All right, moving on to the next part.
All right, so now we're going to look at anaerobic respiration, which was just looking at after glycolysis has occurred. Okay, so when glycolysis has, has occurred, we end up with two pyruvate molecules. Okay, now anaerobic respiration is going to occur in the side of zole of the cell. Okay, there's no mitochondria required and no oxygen required, but we still need that glucose. So all of anaerobic respiration is going to involve glycolysis as the first step, but we are then going to follow a different biochemical pathway. So using those molecules other than oxygen as the final electron acceptor. So prokaryotic cells have evolved um, to continue with many of these anaerobic pathways, whereas eukaryotes, okay, eukaryotic cells like animal and plant cells, commonly use two pathways that we're going to talk about. So that's alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. So alcoholic fermentation is producing carbon dioxide and ethanol. Okay, so the process that we are following is the energy from the NADH molecule that's created from glycolysis is going to be used to recombine the pyruvate molecules with water, and it's going to form two alcohol molecules, and we call that ethanol, which you can see here, and it's also going to produce two carbon dioxide molecules. So this process often occurs in yeasts, and it's also how we make wine. Um, it can also be used in bread making. So basically we've got our glucose, which is going to be converted into ethanol, carbon dioxide, and ATP. All right, in terms of lactic acid fermentation, we can also call this animal fermentation. But basically, instead of those pyruvate molecules being turned into ethanol and carbon dioxide, what's going to happen is they're going to be recombined to form lactic acid. Okay, and a buildup of lactic acid will often cause cramping. So our muscle cells are often going to um, go through this process if there's not enough oxygen available to them. So if we're using up energy quicker than it's being made available, um, using up oxygen quicker than it's being made available, then we are going to be following this process here. So it's going to be problematic because it's going to lower the pH in the cells and this process can't be kept up for very long. So in terms of what's happening, our glucose is going to be converted into lactic acid and ATP. So in terms of looking at anaerobic respiration, because only glycolysis, that first stage is occurring, there's only two ATP molecules that are being created. Okay, So it's more efficient in terms of trying to get the most energy out of glucose would be aerobic respiration. Okay, Because anaerobic, we're only getting two yields of ATP per glucose molecule. So it's quicker than aerobic, but it's definitely not as efficient as aerobic respiration is. All right, so in terms again of this lactic acid fermentation, we are producing two ATP molecules per molecule of glucose, whereas in comparison, aerobic respiration is producing 36 ATP per molecule of glucose. So like I said, aerobic respiration is more efficient, but anaerobic is yielding an ATP yield faster than aerobic respiration. So if a cell needs energy quickly, anaerobic respiration is best, but it's not sustainable for the cell. All right, looking into things that can affect cellular respiration. All right, so again, temperature, the amount of glucose that's available and the amount of oxygen that's available. If any of these things change, they are going to impact the rate at which cellular respiration is occurring and how well it can occur. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'm more than happy to help answer them. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.